world-class dribbling, we are witnessing greatness on the pitch. We've got a true gem in the world of football, Kenji Gore. The Manchester United young promise has done it again. And when the pressure is on, Gore delivers. He's the one you want in front of goal when the game's on the line. Kenji Gore. His scoring instincts are impeccable and he's got the numbers to prove it. Whether it's a tap-in or a thunderous strike, he makes it look effortless. And there goes Gore, effortlessly gliding past his defender. He lines up the shot and he finds it. Top right corner, clinical finish. Gore makes it look easy. Benji Gore, welcome to the podcast, man. Thanks for taking the time. I know you're a busy man. I'm um, really glad we got to schedule this. Like I said before, you know, you seem to have a really illustrious career and uh, played at a, a lot of great clubs in a lot of interesting places. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So without further ado, if you could just introduce yourself, you know, your name, how old you are, position, where you're currently playing. And then, yeah, we'll dive into your journey, man. Looking forward to it. Oh, I love it, man. First and foremost, thank you so much for having me on, brother. Um, it's an absolute privilege and uh, an honour to, to come on and share a little bit about who I am um, and, and the career that I've had um, and the, the favour that is upon me of that God has blessed me with. You know, I'm just so grateful for the, the talent that he's blessed me with and, and that I get to do what I love to do um, every day. You know, that is, is such a blessing in itself. But a little bit about me, I'm Kenji Gore. Um, I was born in Holland, moved to England when I was five um, and I'm 29 now. Um, I started my career at Manchester United, was there for, for uh, my whole youth academy until 18 years old. I then signed for Swansea, where I signed my first professional contract. Uh, had an amazing five years there, to be honest. Ended up making my Premier League debut. Um, and from there, I moved to Portugal. Um, I moved to Nacional in Madeira and played in Portugal for five years. Um, and then moved and now playing it out here in Qatar. So uh, I'm, I'm 29 now, just turned 29 um, a couple of days ago. So um, honestly, I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful that I get to do what I love to do every day and just empty myself out and, 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 and continue to do, to do God's will um, in, in my life. Yeah, that's awesome, bro. That's awesome. And, and you know, I appreciate it. I'm sure the audience really appreciates, you know, your smile and your positivity. I think that's so big, you know, I think it's very underrated in this game. Obviously, you know, you do what you love. Uh, there are tons of ups and downs, but the fact that you're grateful to God and, and what, what he's doing for you and to provide you the strength and power is, is huge. And I think it all starts with gratitude. When, you know, before we dive into your career a little bit, when, when did you start to... Um, really find that gratitude in your life and, you know, be thankful for what you do because, you know, it's easy to say to be grateful, but it's hard to find that sometimes. That is a great question, brother. And honestly, it came with a process, you know, and when I think about the process, I think about, you know, as, as professional athletes, we go through so many ups and downs. It's a roller coaster. You know, football is full of ups and downs. And, you know, it got to a point where, I was at Manchester United literally my whole life, like my whole life from six years old playing at United. And it was like going to school. It was like a norm. And it got to a point where I got into the office. Um, the boss called me into the office. It was one just a normal day of training. Uh, Sir Alex Ferguson says, Kenji, I want to speak to you. Um, so I go into the office and I knock on the door and I said, hi, boss, sit down. Don't know what to say to him. Um, um, obviously his presence in, in that room just feel it is full it's full you know it's heavy it's heavy in there but also there's a lot of you know there's it's just it's just a lot you know especially when you're in the presence of the greatest manager for me in all of all time yeah. um, but at that time it was yeah. normal you know I'm at Manchester United it's so normal um, but I remember going in there and I was like well what's he got to say and uh, and he said Kenji you've been here for for, for 18 years now and uh no, for 10 years, sorry, for 10 years now. Um, you were, I was 18 at the time. And uh, he said, honestly, I can give you a new contract now, but I know that's not going to do you any good. I believe that with the ability that God has given you, the, with the ability that you have, I believe that you need to go out there and, and explore um, other avenues to, 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 to go out there and play. Um, and, you know, when 
I hit got hit with that news. It was like it was like he started to to also say to me like there's there's a lot of players ahead of you. You know, at the time it was like Nani Giggs. You know, the guys coming through was like Adnan Yanuzai, um, Ad- Andreas Pereira. They were the guys in my age group. Jesse Lingard. Um, all these guys were, were 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 ahead of me at that time. And he was like, I can't guarantee that you're going to be playing have any game time. And he said, with a guy of your ability, you have to go out there and play. And I remember getting into my car, driving home, and I just burst out crying. I just burst out crying, let everything out. Um, and honestly, long story short, I ended up telling my parents. And I just felt like I was so lost. I just felt like I didn't know who I was because my identity was tied into what I do. My identity was tied into playing and being this footballer. Um and I was also I was always known as the guy that plays for Manchester United. Yeah, that's Kenji, the guy that plays for Manchester United. And now suddenly I'm like, well, who am I? Like, what am I going to tell my friends? What am I going to tell the guys at school? What am I going to tell my parents? They've sacrificed their life. My my parents sacrificed their whole life to stay in Manchester because I was playing for Manchester United. They were going to go yeah. back to Holland, you know, but they sacrificed their life. So I was like, how am I going to how, what am I going to say to these people? What am I going to say to them? And honestly, they were just amazing with me. I cried <laughs> for, for, for a day. Um, but something that my dad mentioned, and I, there might be someone going through that right now that has just hit, got hit with some news. And I just wanted to remind you, when one door closes, another one opens. You know, and, and my dad said to me, he said, listen, Kenji, you're at the top. Where do you want to go? And I was like, oh, my days, yeah, where do I want to go? Like, where do I want to go? And that's why I want to encourage anybody listening to this, like, where do you want to go? And be, and be realistic with your situation of where you're at as well. Like, where do you want to go? Are you, are, like, are you exploring the, area, the, the places where you want to go? So what I did, I wrote down all the clubs that I wanted to go to. I wrote down Swansea, Everton, West Ham, because they're the things that I wanted to go and see. Like, I looked at all the wingers in that position. I'm a winger myself. I looked at all the players in my position of how I'm going to break into that first team. How many players are there? Right, there's three players there, there's two players in that position. How am I going to be- get the most chances? And Swansea, there wasn't a lot of wingers in the under-23s. There wasn't any, uh, uh, a lot of wingers in the first team as well. Um, there was Wayne, Wayne Routledge, Nathan Dyer um, that were playing on the wings. And I was like, wow, I would love to play amongst that, amongst that. And, and long story short, I then signed um, at Swansea. But to answer your question... Um, I've just gone round a roller coaster there. No, but I love it. I love it. I'm going to dive into some more. I love it. Yeah. But but honestly, like to answer your question, it was like I placed my identity in football. And when I placed my identity in football with full of ups and downs of what football brings, that means my life is full of ups and downs. You know, when football's going good, life is good. When football's going bad, life is bad. And I didn't want to feel that way anymore. So I said, well, who am I? Who am I? And as I started to really go dive deep into who I am, I started to realize the calling upon my life as well. You know, in in the Bible, it speaks about who we are. In Genesis, in the beginning, it says, God created us in his likeness and image of who he is. So if Mm -hmm. I am made in his image, if I am made in his likeness, that means, and I'm a child of God, that means... That is my identity before the football. And that's why I started to really dive deep into who I was, regardless of what I do. You know, and that's kind of to answer your question. That was really the switch uh, for me, to mm. be honest. Just figuring out yeah. who I am. Yeah, dude, I, I really, really love that. And I could tie that in from what I've seen in the space for the last seven, eight years, trying to help younger players, inspire them. That's a major reason I have this podcast and the you know, content I put out, because I never had a mentor. I didn't have a big brother. So my goal is to be that mentor and big brother to these, you know, young footballers who want to make it to the next level. But we, you know, you answered a great, you answered something that is probably the biggest question within the football industry that I see from young players is, you know, they always say like, Rick, you know, in the, in the team training and individual training, I'm really, really good. But when I go into matches, I start to choke. I lack confidence. Mm -hmm. And I actually think it all ties down to this, what you said, tying your identity into you just being a footballer and nothing else. So I think the major problem is, you know, everyone puts unneeded pressure on themselves and they don't find that real avenue of why they started playing the game. And then they don't differentiate themselves from their, their self and then the footballer. And I think it's so valuable because like you said, this is such a emotional game. And if you get tied up into it, your mental health off the pitch isn't going to be good. 
so yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, w whatever it is, you know, wh whether you believe in, in the higher power, finding, finding that identity off the pitch and really, you know, developing other skills and other hobbies besides football, I think is essential to actually develop your true confidence on the pitch as a, as a footballer. So true, man. So true. So true. Especially when it comes to confidence, you know, you know, like sometimes I'm going to share, I'm going to share this because I feel like it's in my heart to share, you know, yeah, like yeah. there might be people that were on here and I was there myself where I placed my confidence in what people said about me rather than who I am. So it's like, if your coach says you are good at this specific thing, that means that you are good because he's affirming something to you. So that means he, he's good. So it's like, it, you are now performing for him rather than actually who you actually are. And that's why when, you, when we're talking about who we are, you have to identify what I have to identify, what player I am. What am I good at? What do you bring to the team? What is your role in the team? And that is what brings confidence because you, you, Rick, I, the players that are listening to this, we all have specific qualities. One's fast, one's strong, one's this, one's that. One's good at crossing, one's good at heading, one's good at finish. Like there's so many different qualities that one's good at, but we have to identify the power that God has given us that we're good at and that's what we need to do more of we don't need to do what other people are, are doing we don't need to do what what they're good at or oh, one's good at dribbling so d d let them dribble one's good at crossing take a touch and cross it don't try and dribble if you're not a good dribbler you know but mm -hmm. you have to be honest with yourself and figure out what player you are and me as myself i can only talk for wingers i'm a winger we have to we have to create we have to get ourselves in positions to create. Look at other players that are doing it and getting themselves into positions. Like I look at certain wingers, like Vinicius, for example, how he manipulates a ball and how he gets himself free. How he gets himself free. He always looks like he's free. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, yeah. It's mad. Yeah. How does he get himself yeah. in that position? Because he's patient. He waits for the right moment of where he is on that pitch. And when he gets in that moment, whoever's the right back, whoever's the left, back, whoever stands there, he's got a move to beat him outside and he has a move to beat him on the inside. And that's why as wingers, I'm talking to wingers right now, if you, you need to be able to beat a man inside and beat a man outside. 100%. And that comes 100%. with comfort and, and, you're, and you have to keep doing it. You have to keep doing it. And that's why it's about mastering what God has given you and knowing your ability. Sometimes it's not dribbling past him. Sometimes it's waiting for that extra yard, whipping it in, knowing that the striker's there heading it first post. Build that mm -hmm. relationship with your striker. Build that relationship with the number 10 to understand what, how to get the best out of you. Um, so, yeah, that's, a, that's, that's all I just wanted to add on to what you just shared so beautifully, bro. Yeah, yeah, I love that, bro. I love that. And it all comes down to that honest self-dissection, that honest self-analysis, looking yourself in the mirror, telling yourself what you're good at and what you're bad at. And, you know, with that being said, because we have a lot of young footballers listening, you know, if they have a player that they want to play like or they're inspired by, what's your advice on, you know, looking at that player? You know, for example, if you go to a match, you know, you watch a 90-minute match, what's your advice on overall, like, analyzing that player? So I would, I would see, I would look in a, from a perspective of how can I see myself in that player? So it's like, how can you see yourself in that? Like, are you, have you got those characteristics? If you're not fast, <laughs> you're not going to look at a fast player. Exactly, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're going to have to look yeah. at other players that aren't, don't have the pace. So for example, like, who's this? like Daily Blind, for example, right? Fantastic footballer, doesn't not blessed with pace, but what yep. is smart. So if you're not yep. blessed with pace, look at someone like him that you can see his positioning. You can see the things that he's he's in a certain in like even Philip Lahm, for example, not the fastest of players, intelligent, never lost yep. the ball, never lose. Like how how can you see yourself in that player? Um, and that's how you can, and I believe that you can see, like for me, for example, like when I look back at my career, I, or I do stuff now that I saw in players that I played with at United. And I see myself now realizing what they did and was like, wow, like the way they manipulate the ball in that area, like 
That is what I need in my game. So I remember Adnan Yanuzai, right? He was master mm-hmm. at using his body. Yeah. Man couldn't do yeah. man couldn't man couldn't do two pull-ups, yeah. <laughs> Bro, yeah, man, yeah. Two pull-ups. Yeah. The guy couldn't do yeah. two pull-ups in the gym, yeah? Yeah. But what, yeah. but what he was was strong. Strong on the board. You couldn't tackle him because he knew how to use his body. He knew how to use his legs. He knew how to use certain um certain cer- certain ways to manipulate his body in a way that the defender couldn't get in between. And there are things that you can learn from people as you're watching the game, you know, how he's, how he's moving his body, like where, how he's controlling it, how many times he's checked his shoulder. You know, these are things that you, we have to study. Those little details, those little details, they make a big difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. With that being said, uh, you know, I dove a little bit into your, to your history. I see your dad was a big footballer. So that's why you made the move to England did, did, did you get a lot of inspiration from him? How did you develop the love for the game? How did you get into football? So honestly, like my dad is my, my biggest role model. He's someone that That's I awesome. look up to. Um, not just, not just for, for what he accomplished, not just for the Champions League that he plays and all, and all of these amazing things, the double that he won in, in Holland, but more of the man that he is. You know, I think, you know, like you'll see a true man when he goes through trials and tribulations and goes through things and and, and stuff like that like when things are going amazing like it's easy to smile it's easy to to to, to be happy but when things aren't and and i i saw my dad go through so many um gone through life you know and the seed how he handled life and how he handled certain things and what he did was vital in my upbringing was vital in my of of why I actually am still playing right now I think you know he was someone that experienced everything that I was going through yeah. you know yeah. so I I was living with someone that had gone through everything that I'm going through so so mm-hmm. it was like I remember going through life like I only wanted to play football from young all I can remember I started playing for Manchester United when I was six years old you know wow. so so like I was Football was my life. I remember, you know, my dad says it all the time, like how, how um, he asked it. So it got to around 12 years old and my dad asked me, listen, Kenji, do you want to be a professional footballer? And I said, yeah, man, of course I want to be. He said, do you want to do everything in your power to become a professional footballer? And I said, yeah, what's life without football? Like, there's no life without football. And he said, okay, from now on, I'm going to treat you like a professional wow. footballer. And... That wasn't always easy. And there was times, yeah. you know, when, when I wasn't playing, when I was on the bench and I was thinking, I was crying in the car and I was like, this guy and that guy's upset. And he just let me cry. He just let me get it out. He let me let it out. He let me go. And he said, well, Kenji, you chose this. I didn't choose it for you. Mm-hmm. The coach didn't choose for you to be a footballer or not. The guys didn't. You chose it. Yeah. So I was like, wow, like... The intention that he had for me to be able... Because I can see when players have... It's been put on them rather than for, for them sure. to actually play, you know? And, sure. and we're going a bit deep here, in, in a deep end here. But that is, yes. that's the truth of it, you know? Like, as a lot of dads push their ch- children to become something, that that pressure just weighs so much on them that they cannot now perform at the highest level because they're always looking over their shoulder what's their dad thinking what's their dad going to say in the Mm -hmm. car on the way back home you know like he's going to shout at me he's going to say this if I make a mistake he's going to do and and that's the fear then that not going to let them excel in their career you know so so my dad was just honestly amazing with me growing up and 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 helping me um to, to to really um how do you say cultivate my talent in the best way Mm Hmm. yeah I love that man what do you think were, were like some of the biggest tests that, you know, he, he voluntarily put you through to see if you actually wanted to be a footballer? Because like you said, you know, it's very easy to, to say you want to be a footballer, but to do those actions and consistently day after day at the highest level and maintain that standard is not easy. Exactly that. And, and I think, you know, it comes to, you know, when you're a young, when you're a young man, you're around 16, you know, you're getting exposed to things, you're getting exposed to the world. You know, yep. and and yep. and now you've got to make decisions because you've got a game the next day. So now it comes exactly. to Saturday. All your friends are going to this party. All your friends are going to this place, and all your friends are do- staying up late playing plays. All your friends are doing certain things that you want to be involved in. 
because you don't want to be left out. And then my dad says, well, Kenji, do you want to be a professional footballer or not? Yeah. Well, yeah. you know that you have to be home by nine. Yeah. You know, you have to do, you know, and it's just like, and, and I never asked him, like, can I go to this day? Can I go to there? I always said, I want to be a professional footballer. And I always felt like I didn't want to also let him down, but I didn't want to let myself down. 100%. I didn't want to yeah. look back at myself and be like, I didn't give everything to this. Yeah. Because, yeah. because to be honest with you, like growing up, like there was no other option. I was being a professional footballer. There's no other option. Like that was it. Like mm -hmm. there was no way. Mm -hmm. There was not like a plan B or a plan C or if this doesn't work out. I was like, I am becoming a professional footballer, whether people like it or not. That is what I'm doing. Everything in my power to become that. So nothing was going to stop me. From, 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 from achieving that. And I think, you know, it got, it got to a point where these things happened, you know, like where it's like, well, there's a party, my best friend's party on Saturday. What, what do I do now? And honestly, mm -hmm. and to be real with you, like it cost friendship. Yeah. It cost, it cost me, it cost my upbringing. You know, it cost me 100%. missing, missing out on things where, where, um, you know, family parties, it cost me these things, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. that is why I always say it's not for everybody. 100%. Football 100%. isn't for everyone. And there might be someone listening to this where it's like, oh, I built my life, I want to be, but maybe it's not for you. Exactly, exactly. Because it really isn't for everyone. And that's why, and that's why the, these sacrifices that we make to become, you know, professional footballers. Because the one percent of the one percent actually make it, you know, and that's why mm -hmm. it's so 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 interesting. I played with players that are have so much more ability than me. I played with players that have less ability than me. They made it higher than me, you know. So it's like, well, what actually is it, you know? Mm -hmm. And and there's so many different factors to to that. Um, so yeah, to answer to to answer that question, it's uh, yeah, it's it's a lot, man. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. I, I love that. And, and like you said, from the beginning, I think, you know, um, you know, everything is, is meant to happen will happen. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. I always go back to this quote when I talk with young, young, you know, young footballers who want to play at the next level. Sturridge said it, he said, like, you know, the ages between 14 and 18 are probably the most important ages for a young footballer. Because like you said, that's when you start seeing the shiny stuff, the parties, the girls, the going out, yeah. and your ability to just be head down and be tunnel visioned and, and, you know, move those distractions away from you is what's going to take you to the top. And just like you said, you know, there are a lot of people that will come back and say, but what about friends? What about social life? What about, you know, having a girlfriend? And I think it all comes down to this. It's like, like you said, you decided when you were 12 years old, you said, I'm going to be a professional footballer no matter what. And you got to stick to that plan. And that doesn't mean like maybe th some things will come up and then you say, you know, maybe it's not for me, but if you actually want to be a footballer and, through and through, you're going to have to make those choices and those sacrifices. And like I, like I always say, you know, if you have best friends and they don't respect your decision to not go to their party, then they're not your friend anyway. If you have a girlfriend and she doesn't respect you wanting to stay in, she wants to go out, then she's not for you anyway. Yeah. So I, I think it's all about, you know, it might sound selfish, but the goal, if, if that's your ultimate goal, you, you go head down. And if, if the people, the people who are meant to be in your life will stay with you and then the people who are meant to be not in your life will vanish. And I, I think that's one of the most important parts. It's, it's so easy to say, just like everything, but to actually embody that is the goal, you know? So true, brother. So true. Yeah. So I, I'd like to get into your, your, your career a little bit, you know, uh, man United, man. I mean, dream for everyone. How is that man? Six years old. Going in there. Like I mentioned 18. it. Yeah, I mentioned it a little bit, but it was just normal. You know, yeah. like when you're there, it, it, yeah. it's normal. And like when, when I look back at these moments and, you know, the times that we had there, you know, I was playing with the, the best players in the world. You know, I was exposed to the best players in the world. There was a culture at Manchester United of winning. You know, every game that we went to, um, I think it got to a point where, you know, you're 16, you get your season tickets and you have to go to every game. And we went to every game and they won every game. You know, like it was like, yeah, it was like yeah, we know yeah, we're going yeah. again and they're going to win. 
You know, it was yeah. like that, just yeah. that culture, and that was just embodied in myself, in my, in my, in my own self, because you're around that winning mentality. That that winning mentality didn't just come from the games, but it came from training. You know, it got to it got to a point where you know, like when you're going through all these age groups, you know, it was like at Manchester United, yeah, you start off at you know, like at the bottom which is the furthest pitch away. And every year, you go up under 12, under 13, under 14, under 16, under 18, and then reserve 23s, and then the first team is 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 there. So it's like every time mm-hmm. you're going up yeah. a pitch, and it's like, yeah. and every year you're like, I hope that I make it to the next one. I, I pray that I make yeah. it to the next one. I pray that. And every year, you know, I made it into that next year. I made it into next year. I made it into next year. And it was like, I was never had the best ability. I was never the best. But what I did have was that fight. What I did have is that is that mentality to to not just not just settle. You know, I wasn't happy to just sit on the bench or I wasn't happy to just be second best. I still desire to be the best. So I was showing mm-hmm. up like I was the best even though I knew that I wasn't. And 100%. everyone would say that I wasn't the best. But certain players might say, yeah, Kenji was one of of the best. But I knew in myself, like, there was a lot of talent there. A lot of talent, Mm -hmm. you know. And and that's why, like, every year, you you know, you make it to that next level. You make it to that next level. You make it to that next level. And and, and it was just a culture of winning, you know. And like I said, it was just normal. You know, you're coming in, you're having your lunch. Rio Ferdinand's there. Giggs is there. You know, Paul Scholes is there. And it's like, and it was just normal. Just a normal day. And, And, like, I look back at that time and I'm like, I just wish that I would ask more questions. I wish that I would yeah. embrace that moment a lot more because I was surrounded with elite. Yeah. I was surrounded yeah. with elite, you know, and, and that's why I always say to, to the young players, you know, that are at the academies now, that are experienced these players, like, go and speak to them, man. Go and get the knowledge. Go and get the wisdom. Go and get the insight into their careers because it's just so important to, uh, to, to really get, hear that and I remember a story you know like Paul Scholes for example he got to a point where he retired but when he retired he started to train with us so he started to train with us and that literally to see the way that he trained he was already retired he was already finished but he was serious from the passing drill to the boxes the rondos he was serious he'd be sliding he'd be and he would set the tone you know, and that that doesn't come from learn. You don't learn that. You don't teach that. That that's just something that is in you. But that sure. spreads. You know, when someone's giving their everything, that's that will that will make someone else give the everything. You know, like 100%. because you're like, wait. To be honest, I need to also fix up. I want to also show him, and you want to show him how yeah. good you are. Then you know, yeah. and it yeah. got to a point where he then came out of retirement and Ferguson was like, yeah, come back and we need you still. Wow. And he came out of retirement, wow. started playing again. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Started playing again. So it was just, it was just like, I've had such a, amazing memories um, at that time, mm-hmm. you know, playing, playing with the world's best players and seeing them and being exposed to that um, realm. And that it, it was just crazy experience when I look back. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's unbelievable. I mean, you know, with that being said, you, you know, you look back, you said you were sorry you didn't ask so many questions, but obviously, you know, you played a lot of places, 29 now, I'm sure you have a great memory, you know, with all those experiences. What could you look back on, like that guy, like guys like Ferdinand, guys like Giggs, guys like Skulls, what did they do that, that got them to the top and, and kept them and maintained them at the top? It's the discipline of every single day. It's that discipline of every single day, not yesterday. <laughs> you know, like sometimes exactly. we live off yesterday's win. You know, like yep. and the next day it's like the yep. yes. But they're they're winning. They're they're winning every single day. Like in training, they have to win. Like it's not like a a thing of yeah, okay, what well, we're happy with the one one. Like no, they're there to win that session. They're there to win that rondo. They're there to win that mm-hmm. uh, possession drill. They're there to win. It's it's just a culture of winning. And I think, you know, when you have that culture, then in the games, when you're training with the best players, in the games, it becomes easier because now they're on your team. And you, and every team that you're playing against is not as good as the 11 aside that you're playing in training, you know? So yeah, I think, yeah, I think yeah. that's what really made them grow into getting the full potential out of that squad. And obviously having, that, um, having a manager like Sir Alex was, is, is just, 
you know, he, he, he got the best out of everyone. Even the guys that weren't playing, he would, he would just get the best out of them all. 100%. 100%. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like you said, I mean, it's, it's, so, it's so easy to say discipline, but to treat every day as a new day and not think about your past, especially for guys at that level, for guys at your level, is the ultimate goal. You know, and, and like you said from the beginning, that's why it's the 0.001% that, that get there. Yeah, it really, really is. It really is. So after you had that, that conversation with, with Sir Alex, where, where did your mind go to? Obviously, you said you were, you were very sad. You were crying. But then, you know, you said you spoke with your dad. He said to write down your options. What was the next step from there? So then I wrote down the options and I got to a point where I was like, obviously, the confidence got hit there. The, you know, like, you, you're like, oh, am I even that good? You know, all these doubts started to mm -hmm, come on. And mm -hmm. I had this burning flame inside of me that I just wanted to go and prove. Yeah. I wanted to prove yeah. to everyone and also prove to myself that I'm actually good enough, you know, to play. Mm -hmm. So I remember the next week I went on trial at Everton. And on that trial at Everton, I was honestly not to just boast or, or to say, but I was... Honestly, I was so proud of myself because I trained so well. And I remember Darren Gibson was there as well. And he said, like, uh, you remember saying to him, saying to the coach, like, you have to sign him. And I could hear him saying that to the coach, you have to sign him. <laughs> you know, he's someone that we need and, and stuff like that. And I was, I was so, it was just so, it was like, it was like a confidence booster again, where it's like, wait, yeah, I am, I am good. You know, I have got the ability. I have got the, because when you get that news of, you know, that, that, that setback, it's like, you can do two things. You can sulk, you can, you can moan, you can complain, oh, this is why, and this is the reason why, or you can just see it for what it is. And, and my, my, mm -hmm. my dad made me see it for what it really was. And, and that was, and that was that one, that this door is closed. Where's the next door that I, that is open. And that's yeah. why I went to Everton and, and, um, and honestly, it went amazing. Um, but at the end of the week, I had a meeting then with the coach, and 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 the coach said, uh, Kenji, we're not gonna we're not gonna sign you. And I was so shocked. But I remember being in the car on the way home, and I was like, yeah. I was just, I, I I knew that okay, this isn't where I'm supposed to be. But I just knew I was so confident exactly. because of how I trained that another door would open. And there was another player there on trial at the time, and his agent saw the training sessions. He watched the training sessions. That agent ended up speaking to Swansea and Swansea wow. signed me without going there. So I then signed my professional contract wow. at Swansea from the trial wow. at Everton. I signed a two-year wow. deal at Swansea. And that's why I wanted to encourage anyone. You never know who's watching. So what looks like a fail... Like, and at that time, Swansea had just won the, Car the, 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 the Carabao Cup. So it was like, they just won wow. the Cup. They're going to Europe. Yeah. And they were like, it was all on top. So it was like, wow, like this is just amazing. So I went to, I ended up signing a two year deal, a professional contract at Swansea from the trial at Everton that I had that ended up me signing for Swansea. So anyone that's listening to this, just you never know who's watching. And you just never know from one opportunity another one can open, you know? One, 100%. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you took the words out of my mouth. That's exactly what I thought and what I was going to say. And, I'm sure you, you know, you took everything that you learned at Man U, you know, the professionalism on and off the pitch and the right people notice that, you know, I, I think it's the people, you know, some people nowadays are like, you know, they don't want to look like they're doing too much or th th there's this weird mindset some, with some people, but it's like, if you act like a true professional and you really want to get to that next level, the right people are going to notice the right agents, the right coaches. And then, like you said, you're going to be placed in that right environment as long as you're doing those those right things and doing those details that we've talked about. So I think that's, that's unbelievable. Very true, brother. Really, really true. Yeah. yeah. So, so then take us, take us to Swansea. How, how was that? So I get to Swansea now and I had a really, like, a, it just, it just took off from there. Like I just trained really well, played really well and short, like really quickly, I started to tr be training with the first team. Um, and the first team awesome. squad was like, was really small like Michael Laudrup was the coach at the time and he had two players in every position. Wow. And that was his, that was just his thing. Like he, he, and he rotated, he just rotated the squad. It was never, even when they won, like he kept rotating and, um, and from, yeah, from, so from 18 
um, was tra- was just training with the first team most days, um, and but tr- playing with the under twenty ones, um, and I, and I had a really good time. Every preseason would be with the first team, and it was just it was just that moment that all I needed was that break to break into that first team. All I needed was that opportunity to get into that first team, and um, and I had to show myself in the under twenty ones. That's all I could do. I could just prove how good I was in the 21s and in the training sessions. So my dad always told me, like, listen, a training session to someone might just be a training session, but a training session with the first team to use is Champions League final. Like, it's not like, a, it's not just you going into training mm-hmm. and, and, and this is a Champions League fact. You need to go and show. And like, and I was like, wow, like, I need to treat this as a, as a Champions League. This isn't just a, a training session for me. I've got to empty myself out. So anyway, um, I was there. I ended up being there for five years. Had a, a really, really good time uh, there, to be honest, when I look back. But also quite frustrating as well. Um, I remember um, in the under-21s, like, we had a really great team. Like, our team was, like, really good. We had, um, um, when I look at my team now, like, a lot of them are playing still at the highest level um, in the Premier League Championship. Um, a couple of them are abroad now as well. So we had a really good under twenty ones team, and we and we used to we beat like we, we I think we won the league that year, we won uh, we won the cup that year, um, and that's when I was also top goal scorer of the league. I had the most assists in the league. I, um, um, I it was like it was like a, a top season, and to top that off, I also then made my Premier League debut. So then I, I made my Premier League debut, and uh, and from there I signed a new three year contract. Um, at, at Swansea in the Premier League and it was like wow like this was like the best time of my career like I was like on like it was only going up and up and up yeah and yeah. Um, and when I signed that new deal I said I said to myself I, and I was st- honestly I was just starving to play I just wanted to play so bad and and I remember mm-hmm. the the chairman he was like Kenji your time will come like stay patient stay patient but now I'm 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 21 and I'm like I I can't play 20 21's football anymore like, I just can't do it. Yeah, I felt yeah. like I just completed it you know I couldn't I couldn't do that anymore I just wanted to play first team and um, mm-hmm. and the first team manager was like, listen, you're going to have to go on loan because I can't guarantee that you're going to be playing here. And, uh, and and now I look back and I'm like, well, I had Wayne Routledge in front of me, Nathan Dyer. I had all these amazing Montero, Pablo Hernandez, you know, all these guys that were ahead of me. And I was like, to be fair, like they're not waiting on Kenji Gore to to, to to come into the team. Like I have to I have to wait for the for the for the right moment. I have to wait. And And, you know, like when you're just doing everything like in your control and it's all going well. You're just waiting for the opportunity to come and you're just like, it should be me now. It should be me now. And God said, I have to take you through this process in order for you to be ready. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes it's not about your ability that will get you somewhere. It's about the character that you have to have in order to, for you to be ready to stay there. Because sometimes the easy, it gets to a point where it's, it's the easiest bit is actually make it the hardest is staying. Yes. Yes. Yep. And that comes with character and you're going to have to get that character intact in order for you to stay there. And that's why there's not a lot of players that stay at the highest level for a long time. Mm-hmm. And, yet, and that's the people that we have to study. They're the people that we have to look at where it's like, they've not just done a two seasons good. They've done a 10 seasons, because seven seasons consecutively, they've caught, they've done this. That comes from that comes from something building up to that. What? You know, that 100%. doesn't just happen. So um so yeah, I went I went on that process and and after three years, you know, after three years, I um after three years being at Swansea, I ended up signing a three-year deal. Yeah, this is what happened. So I signed a three-year deal and then I went on uh, the gaffer. I had a meeting with the club, and they said, "You know what's best is going on loan." And fortunately, you know, I've just made my Premier debut, and I was like, "I need to go now and play." And I said, "Okay, yeah. where should, where do I go and play?" And and I had a lot of calls from managers, coaches, um, where I could play. And a lot of players at that time were going to Holland, and mm-hmm. I was actually from Holland, so I was like, "That would be perfect yeah. to go to Holland, go and play, yeah. and then come back um, and be." And I had a call for, from, from a coach, Henk Fraser, his name was. And he said, Kenji, listen, I've watched you play. You're going to absolutely kill it in Holland. I want you to be in my team. 
I want you to come here and come here and play and then make that next step again to the to to the next uh yeah. Um, to the next step in your career, and I was like, you know what, like that feels comfortable. I said, let me sit with it, let me, you know, and and honestly, he was calling me most days, like, come on, now we need you, can you come now? And um, and I felt in, and I felt myself, you know what, I'm going there, I'm going, and I went to Holland, um, and you know, I went there, and things didn't go to plan. I ended up being on the bench, mm-hmm. ended up being on the bench. And I was like, how have I got to this situation? I'm on top right now, but now I've come yeah. to Ardo Den Haag in the Dutch division. No disrespect to the Dutch league, but it was like, there's the Premier League and there's the, the Dutch league, you know? And, and yeah. I was like, yeah. how am I, how am I not playing here? And my mindset was, if I don't play here, I'm not going to play in the Premier League. If I don't play here, I'm not going to play in the Premier League. And that is one of the biggest lies. And I want to tell everyone that's listening to this, wherever you are now doesn't mean you're not going to get to where you, where you, where, where, like the MLS, for example, in America. Yep. Or it doesn't mean that you're not going to get to the level that you desire to play at if you're not playing at the level that you think isn't right right now. Because there's a process that you have to go on. And I have yeah, to and, go. And football is a game of opinions. You know, it's game a game of opinions. Of opinions. You, you, get, you get to have one manager that you know, at a lower league club in a lower division that doesn't like your style and you don't fit mm-hmm. his, his style. And then you go to another club and you're like, wow, this, yeah. is, this is easy, you know? It's so true. It's so true. And, and the biggest lesson that I learned from, from, all, from that whole experience of going out to Holland was that I put my faith and I put my trust in the coach rather than myself and rather in God. Mm-hmm. So... Very well said. Yeah. That is that is why it's really really important that we don't put our trust in people because people let us down. I let myself down. You let yourself down. Every yeah. that be, the listeners, you let yourself down. We fall short. We fall short, yeah. and that's why I'm not angry at my coaches because I know they fall short. I fall short. You know, I fall short. So if they fall short, but we put our trust in that, we'll be let down. But that's why we have to remind ourselves about God's plan upon our lives. The purpose that he has for us is greater than the purpose that we have for ourselves. And that's why it's important to know what God says about you rather than what man say about you. Mm-hmm. And that's, what, and that, that's what I really learned in that process. And that's what I, I had to know in myself as well in order to then go to the next level um, in my career as well. 100%. Yeah, I, I love that. I, I want to get into that a bit after and, and the meaning sure. of all that. Uh, but take us through a little bit of your, you know, your Premier League debut against Crystal Palace, right? Yes, against Crystal Palace. How was that? How was the feeling? How was the vibe, you know, going through the Man United Academy, you know, you know, uh, not signing at Everton, agent getting you to Swansea, and then you finally make your debut. How's that feeling? How old were you then? I was 21. Wow. 20, 20, 21 years old. And honestly, I look back now, <laughs> I look back and I laugh because at that time, all I felt was finally. It was like, I look back and I'm like, yeah, this should have been two years ago. This should have been three. You know, like it, I never, I didn't enjoy it the way I should have. And when I look back about how it all looked, I look back with so much gratitude because my wife that was there, my my mum was there, my dad was there, my grand, my my um, uh, my auntie was there, and they were there to see me, and they were so proud of me. I remember, like when I, we talk about it now, my wife was like in tears watching me come on, and my mum was like so proud of me when when I came on because yeah. it was like they sacrificed their life for me and and all these things like. It was like the icing on the cake. My best friend that we we played together at United, we played together at Swansea, we played together at Northampton, we played together at three different clubs, and he was on the bench while I made my Premier League debut. So we wow. we speak about it to this day, where it's like yeah. this moment was just it was just surreal. But at that moment, it was like finally, but. But now I look (laughs) back with so much pride. I look back with so much sacrifice that I made, the parties that I didn't go to, 
the, the, the things that I sacrificed, the family gatherings, the, 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 the FIFA tournaments, the, all these things that I missed out on for this. You know, mm-hmm. and, and that is what that is what it's all about, you know. And it was a moment that I was just like, I look back and I'm like, wow, like I was on that pitch and I just, you know, I did a couple moves and I was like, I was just so grateful to to yeah. have that yeah. um, experience for sure. Yeah. With that being said, like diving back to the beginning part of the conversation, when going into that match, did you have any any nerves? Did you have any doubts? And if so, how did you deal with that? How did you develop the confidence to go in there and find your flow in the game? Honestly, I had so much hunger inside of me. I had so much like, I can't, I, get me on. It was like, just get me on. I want to get on. Yeah. And then when he said, like the gaffer came to me, he was like, Kenji, go warm up. And I was like, yes, this is the time. And the warm up yeah. was like, I was sprinting up and down. I was like, yeah. <laughs> honestly, yeah, I was yeah. like, just get me on, get me on, get yeah, me on. Yeah, like, that's yeah. all I felt. And, and it was like, it was just more excitement. It was so much more excitement than pressure. It was like, I really turned that pressure into just, into just enjoying, you know, mm-hmm. every touch that I had, I was just like, I just wanted to just do something and enjoy it. And to, to, to yeah, that's just how I felt. I just felt like mm-hmm. I just wanted to just, just enjoy the, ex- just enjoy it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's about, it's about turning those nerves and that anxiety into excitement, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I love it, man. I love it. So yeah, could you could you take us back to you know the the move to to Ado Den Haag? You know, what what would you, what was the football in Netherlands? You know, compared to England, what was what were some differences that you saw? What did, what did you like? You know, what did you not like? You know, how was your experience there? So in Holland, the the football is uh, is very tactical. It's very like um, it's very slow. You know, it's very mm-hmm. build up play. You know, it's like. Mm-hmm. Find the right moments to attack. Find the right moments to um, to make things happen. You know, it's one side to another. And I think at Swansea, it was like in the Premier League, especially, it's like attack, 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 yeah. attack. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. one team goes, the other team goes, the other yeah. team goes, yeah. Yeah. and it's like yeah. it's it's a, a very high intensity. Mm-hmm. In Holland, it was like, well, wait, there's no one pressing me here. Yeah. A lot of time on the ball. It was like it was like strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in England, yeah. it was like someone's on your back someone's there, mm-hmm. someone's there to take the ball off you, someone's there to, to um, yeah, in your face. And I think that's the, that's the biggest different difference, to be honest, with that mm-hmm. for me. Interesting, interesting. Biggest difference. Yes, so then after, after that, you made a move to Portugal, yeah? To Nacional, you said? Yeah, so then, so then it got to a point at Swansea where I was like, I had a meeting with the, the chairman at the time and, and he was like, listen, I want to offer you a new contract. This is going to be... Mm-hmm. Your... And we got relegated to the championship this season. Got mm-hmm. relegated to the championship and he was like, you're going to play. We're going to get a young manager in and that's going mm-hmm. to be giving um, a lot of um, opportunities to the youth. Um, and we see you as a big part of that. See you as a big plan to that. And I said to him, honestly, like, you've been saying this for, for five years. <laughs> yeah. You've yeah. been saying this for five years. Like, I, can I... Can I... I can't... I, what, what do you want me to do with this? information um and he was like listen we want you so it's up to you you know like it's up to you what you want to do and and mm-hmm. that's when i got a call from a coach in uh, in national i got mm-hmm. a call from Costinha, and Costinha was someone that um that won the champions league with under Mourinho, uh with mm-hmm. porto and uh, he called me and he said kenji i really want you to come out into portugal you know i've seen you play i've seen you, you're someone that i need out here in 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 this team and i know that you're going to kill kill this league and i was like mm, portugal let me think you know like it started to, i was yeah. like wow like yeah. really and i remember discussing yeah. it with uh, my dad discussing it with my with my partner my wife my wife now um and i dis- and i was discussing it with them and i was like i started to play with the idea of moving to mm-hmm. Portugal. He said, Kenji, come and see it. Come and see it for yourself and, 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 it, and see it. So I ended up landing in Madeira and I was like, whoa, it's an island. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said, wow. And then I saw a, yeah. stat- a little statue of Ronaldo. I don't know if you've seen that statue. Yeah. There's a little statue yeah, yeah, of Ronaldo. Yeah. And I was like, Ronaldo, Ronaldo was born here. I was like, what? Okay. Yeah, yeah, so I started yeah. to understand that Ronaldo was from there and I, and I had no idea about any of this. So I was like, Where, well, where's, yeah. where's, um, where's the... Where's the city? And they're like, no, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. City. like this is an island. I was like, oh, okay, wow, right. Wow. So then yeah. I went there. I went there. I went to the stadium, 
And there was something in my spirit that said, this is where you need to be. This is mm. where you need to be. This is where you need to be. And I remember walking down like by the promenade um, and I was with myself, my dad and my uncle and we were walking and I was just looking around and that was then the confirmation that this is where, this is where, this is where I need to be. Wow. And I said to my dad, I said, yeah, this is it. And he was like, I feel, I feel the same. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, wow, okay. So now I went back to England and I, uh, and I had a meeting with the chairman and I called him myself and I said, uh, hi, um, I thank you so much for for the for the offer. Thank you so much for everything that you've that you've done uh, for the past five years. Um, but I've got an offer in in Portugal, and I would love to take it. Um, I know that um, you know you can be asking for money and and things like that, but I would really appreciate it if you would just let me go. Um, and he said, Kenji, thank you so much for your call we'll be more than happy for you to go um, wow. yeah. to this next chapter of your life. And I was like, wow, I just thanked God that I could, uh, that I could leave. Um, and I left and I left. And, uh, and that is the moment in my life. So that switch was a moment in my life that I said, I'm going to do everything in my power to not just become the best footballer that I can be, but to also become the best partner that I can be, to also become the best brother that I can be, to also become the best in my finances that I can be. Because I saw that there was a lot of players that were performing well, but their relationship was a shambles, that were performing mm -hmm. well, but their, their finances, they weren't, they were, you know, in a couple of years, they're, yeah. they're not going to yeah. get the finances, yeah. you know? And, and I was like, wow, like, I wanted to be the best in every area. Like, I, did, I didn't what want What made that, that shift? To look, to look back at that time, I was like, I looked at my wife. My wife, my, my, so it was my girlfriend at that time. Mm -hmm. She started a business at 18. Wow. And she started to invest in herself. She started to invest in mentors, coaches. And I saw the process in her. And she started to make money. But she started to make money that I was like, Whoa! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is this yeah, is not yeah. just little change here. We're not talking change yeah. here. So I yeah. was like, and and it wasn't just the finances. There was something. There was something that that switched. There was there was something that was happening. She started to really understand a lot more about herself. And I was like, whoa! Like I want to deepen myself into this. I wanted to become the best that I wanted mm -hmm. to, be. um, because because there was also a part of me that was like. I wasn't, I wasn't the best partner at that time. I wasn't the best um, in my finances at that time. I wasn't the best in, in, in my football even. You know, I wanted to be the best in all these areas. So that's when I started to also live, you know, and, and get mentors and coaches. And, and, and shortly after that, I actually started a business. I started a wow. business called On The Ball, which is uh, personal development and mindset coaching for professional athletes. Nice. And, um, and from that, you know, we had mindset planners and we did a podcast. And then I started a community called On The Ball Squad, where we'd, mm -hmm. come, we'd come together twice a, twice a month. The first call would be with an ex-professional footballer where he'd come on, share his story and speak about his, um, speak about his career. And we could ask questions about his career. And we had some amazing guests coming on, um, amazing guests from Heskey to Andy Cole to... to uh, a lot of a lot of great guests that came on to share their to share their experiences, and then the second call would be with a guest expert. So from financial advisors to mindset coaches to motivational speakers, um, and and we'd also have a time where we'd just open up. We'd open up with the things that we're going through. We'd open up with the thing because I felt like there wasn't a place where we could where we could really do that. There wasn't a place where mm -hmm. we could really open up about the things that we were really going through. You know, like mm -hmm. when football, when we when we talk about football, we talk about so many challenges that we go through. You know, the pressure of having to perform at the highest level every single game. And if you don't play, like how are you gonna then provide for your family? And if you don't play, then how are you gonna and, and these are things that we then bypass by saying, Oh, I don't really care. Or, yeah. or you bypass by yeah. working hard and not really expressing your emotions of what you're actually going through. So I wanted to create a place where we could be real. 
And and that's what happened. You know, we had people coming on and saying that football wasn't for them anymore. We had people coming on and to, to share, like, to ended up making their steps into becoming better players. We had players that came on that were playing higher levels than, you know, that you can that you can imagine, but they were still suffering with certain things. Um, and mm -hmm. that was that was really a platform where we did that. And that's what that what came from, you know, from me really figuring out who I was. And that was because I was more than a player for sure more than what 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 I did um and that's what that's what God really blessed me blessed me with to be honest with you. I always say to my wife like that wasn't something that I desired to do that was something that I had to do, you know because there was it was that burning it was something burning in my heart that mm -hmm. was like I had to do this um so I started mentoring players mm -hmm. started to, to to mentor um as well so so that's where i got into my life that's what happened into my life and and that's when that all happened when i really moved to, to portugal something shifted mm -hmm. yeah that, that, that's very interesting and i think that's you know so well said i mean i think obviously football is a business at the end of the day mm -hmm. so you know at the end of the day you know as much as if there are good people or good coaches like people don't have, some people don't have the time to talk about emotions. They don't have the time to talk about your own individual struggles and your flaws. So I think, like you said, being able to find a good community and a good space to really sit down and, and, and share is, is so important and, and undervalued, whether it's a community or a couple of good friends, a girlfriend, whatever it is, and, and having the ability to share and let that off your chest is so important because, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you're just going out and trying to get the three points every single day, every single match. And you're trying to, you know, be the best player you can be every single day. But, you know, there are things that you go through. And I think what I've realized is the happier you are off the field, the better you're going to be on the field and the happier you're going to be on the field, you know, and, and, and your mental health off the field, how that really affects your performance on the field. So having the ability to really, you know, talk about, you know, because everyone talks about football and mental health, but having that community to really yeah. um, guide you. And, and that's, that's a major reason I have this, this podcast because, you know, everyone sees nowadays the, hot, the highlights on social media. They see, oh, you know, he's driving the Ferrari. He's got the Rolex. He's got the beautiful girlfriend. But, you know, no, no matter who you are, you're always going to go through, through ups and downs. You know, yeah. they're going to be different problems, but you're going to be going through those lows. And I think that the main goal is to be able to, you know, see it for what it is, and, and, you know, find a solution, you know, because I think nowadays with the mental health crisis is some people think that they're alone, but when you find a community that's gone through the same type of things, you can, you can learn from their experiences. And, that, and that's the importance of, of, of mentors. That's the importance of people who've been through uh, the same troubles and the same problems. Well said, brother. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, so take us, take us through the, the journey in Portugal. Yeah, man. So Portugal was it, and it started. It actually, so it got to a point where I was like, I wasn't playing in the beginning, and I was so frustrated. I was so angry. However, I was the happiest I've ever been. So it was mm -hmm. like, wait, my football isn't my identity here because I'm actually happy when I'm not playing. So that's mm -hmm. what God had to take me through. He had to take me through that experience. He had to take me through through that understanding that football doesn't hold that weight over me anymore. But I love it and I love to play mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. if I don't, I'm, I, I want to play. So it got to a point where I actually went to the second league in Portugal. I went on loan. Mm -hmm. So now I've gone from the Premier League to the Portuguese League to the second league. And that, is a, that was a humbling process that, I, that God took me on. It was a humbling mm -hmm. process because it was like, it doesn't matter where you've played. It doesn't matter what you've done. We're all at the same level here. Like, you might have came from the Premier League, but the guy that's just came from Nigeria and playing here as well, he's the same level as you can do. Like, it doesn't matter where you come from. And I was just like, wow. Like, I used to rely so much on that, that it, that it gave me pressure because it's like, now it's like, you've came from the Premier League. Now we expect this. Mm -hmm. You know, we expect mm -hmm. this. And someone that, the, the same guy in, in, on the right wing, for example, the Nigerian, the centre mid, sorry, in my team, he came from Nigeria, the, not, not the same expectation was put on him, you know, mm -hmm. but he was there and he was just happy. He was yep. just so blessed yep. to be there. 
And I was like, I was frustrated. I was angry. I was like, I'm in the second league of Portugal. What? How is yeah. that possible? But I was like, I'm, in the, I'm the same as him. So God reminded me to humble myself where it was like, you're, you're, you're the exact same. Like, who do you think you are? Who do you think you mm -hmm. are? And that's why, I, you know, anyone that might be listening to this, it's like, who do you think you are? You're at the same level. You're at the same level. Whatever team you're playing at, you're all on the same level. There's no one higher or lower than anybody else. You're on the same level. So I went on that humbling process of, of you know, playing at the, these top stadiums, now going to the second league and playing in these stadiums. And, and, yeah, I, and yeah. honestly, it went, it, went, and it went really well. Started to really find confidence, started to really find um, um, my, my, my feet again. And I was just enjoying my playing football. And we ended up finishing third in the league. And then my team, Nacional, at the time, got relegated. Wow, so I was yeah. like, oh my days, I'm going to have to play another season in the second league. But, but yeah. I, had a lot, I had a couple of offers in the first league again, so I was so grateful. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm probably going to leave. Um, anyway, anyway, I didn't leave. The club didn't let me go. Um, I, was, mm -hmm. I was like, how are you not letting me go? Like, my wage is going up. My salary is going up. Like, yeah. just let me go to, the, to, to yeah. the first league. Like, there was clubs in the first league and they were like, no, we want to get promoted. You're staying here. Bro, I stayed there and I'm on the bench. I couldn't wow. believe, I was like, well, how is this possible? Like, I'm, and when I say I'm on the bench, like I'm still coming on, I'm getting minutes and when, you know, when mm. this happening. But it got to a point where, you know, there was five yellow cards and I was like, right, now is my time. The guy in my position got five yellows. But the team's doing well. Mm -hmm. Got five yellows, I played that game, scored. The wow. second game, the right winger got five yellows. So now the, the left winger came back in the team, but he went right wing. So I played that game, yeah. got an assist, we won. Wow. And that set me up and I started to play. Um, I started to play again. And that's why I wanted to encourage anyone. Says, if you find yourself on the bench at the moment, keep working hard, keep grasping, and keep being ready for your opportunity. Because if you're not ready, your opportunity is going to come. And if you're not ready, oh man, you're going to beat yourself up. You're going to, you know, you're going to, and yeah, I just have to, Make sure that you're ready for that opportunity. And, and let me tell you, I was ready. I was ready. And um, yeah. things were going well. We ended up getting promoted. Then I played a season in the first league and I had a really good season. Uh, played really well. Um, and, that came to, and that was my last year of my contract. I then signed for uh, Boa Vista, um, which is a, re which is a, a, good, a great club in, in Portugal. Um, great fan base. Um, in Porto as well, so we lived in Porto, yeah. and and that I hear was it's beautiful there. Yeah, beautiful man, beautiful. Yeah. Really enjoyed my time there as well. Um, and then I played two years there. I had a great time, to be honest. We wow. we had some great memories. Um, you know, by beating Sporting, we 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 wow. drew again. We got to the semis of the of the cup as well, um, where we played against Benfica. We lost on penalties. Uh, we should have won that game. I still think we should have won that wow. game. Had some opportunities. Yeah. Um, but I had some great memories there and I played, re played some really good football. And, um, and that's why I, t I, t I speak about the process, because the process is what it's all about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's never about the end goal. It's all about the process. And that's 100%. why God had to take me through that process in order for my character be to be able to match where I am and what I needed to achieve. And also for, for that character to be molded. Because God cares more about your character than he does about your career. 100%. You know, he cares more about that character side. And to, to, for that character to be formed, you, got, you, go through, you go through trials. You go through trials. You know, you go 100%. through things. And, and especially when you put value in football. When you put your value in football with the ups and downs of football, you know, you're definitely going to have to go through trials. Because there's going to be 100%. moments where you're on the bench. You're going to go through moments where you're not scoring. You're going to go through moments when you're not playing well. But it's how you handle yep. those moments. It's what you do in those moments. It's, it's like we said before, like, it's easy to smile when things are going well. It's easy to smile when football's going amazing. But can you still smile when football's not going well? Can you still smile? Can you still go with your chest high when you've just missed a yep. sitter the, 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 the day before? You know, like these are things that God challenged me with. I was going to, 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 to cafes. I saw myself like when going to that same cafe that I used to, that I go to. And I was like, I don't really want to show my face. They're going to ask me about the game. They're going to ask. And I was just like, it got to a point where I was like, nah, man, I need to release that. That's not who I, that's not who I am. 
That is not me. Yeah. So that that player that missed or that player that got red card or that player that didn't get the man of the match award, you know, you didn't play well. So what? That doesn't mean you, you're not, you, you don't show up the same way of who you are. Mm -hmm. you know? so, so that's what I, I, I really went through. And, um, and, and to answer your question, bro, like my time in Portugal was great, man. I had an amazing, yeah, yeah, amazing yeah. time. Amazing time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, like you said from the beginning, and even, you know, when you mentioned your father, you know, you just really respected how he went through the downs. You know what I mean? You said, like, it's, it's so easy to be, you know, with someone, you know, when they're on the highs, when they're on the ups, but the downs are what really tells you about a real man, you know, and I'm sure you took tons of inspiration. And I think something that you, you've said throughout the whole conversation that is a key pointer here is, you're going you're gonna to have the ups and downs. Like you said, you, you went from the Prem to, to the second league in Portugal. But instead of judging yourself and kind of looking at it like a, a metamorphosis process, a character building process through the whole thing and really enjoying the journey is the main goal. You know what I mean? It's, it's not like it's not the destination, like you said, but taking that whole process as, and using it to build your mind, to build your body and build those values that it, it eventually – you know, going to build a family, it's going to build a business, it's going to build your future after football. And you take all those lessons that you learn, you know, the discipline, the time management, the respect, the consistency, and you put that into your life in the future. And I think when people can really grasp that, then you don't put as much pressure on yourself in, in, in daily training, in daily matches, and you just look at it as a learning process. Uh, that's what I've kind of discovered from speaking to guys like you, myself, and I think it really relieves the pressure. So true. So yeah. true, bro. So, yeah, bro. So take us through. So, so after, after Portugal, y your next move was to Qatar, yeah, where you're at now? Yeah. So then, honestly, I, got, I came to like a, a crossroad in my career where it's like, okay, I was, I was thinking like, which way am I going to go? You know, where am I, where am I really going to go? And it got to a point where I had to be real myself. I had to be real myself and say to myself, like, if I continue to play where I am now, I'm going to have to work after my career. I'm going to have to find a job because mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to sustain the, the lifestyle that I desire to live. So I was like, okay. Would you be open then to go to to Qatar, Saudi? And I said to myself, I would I would explore the idea for sure. Let me let me go into that. And when the opportunity came to come out here and to to experience it here, I was like, started to play with the idea a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, like, and one thing that I've learned in my career is just know what you're saying no to. You know, like, you have to explore everything, especially when an offer comes in. Sometimes it might not be the level that you want it to be at, or sometimes it might not look the way you think it should, but you should explore it because there's something mm -hmm. there, you mm -hmm. know, because offers don't just come. Yeah. <laughs> especially yeah. This, day, this day and age, yeah. offers do not just come lightly. So you have to explore them. In, in or like you have to explore them and I explored this offer and and, and it was it was life changing life changing financially for me for my family for 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 my future for the future generations and that's why honestly I decided to come out here and ever since coming out here is it's like wow like it's it's just amazing the life out here is great um spiritually I feel like I'm really growing um in, uh, spiritually as well and in just in every area of my life it's just it's just get taken it's it, it's advancing it's advancing and um and my wife is really enjoying it too so honestly mm -hmm. it's I, I'm so happy that I made the decision to come out here to Qatar to understand another culture to understand how 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 it is to live here you know it was, it was never a thought um I never thought that this this is the way that my life would go, but I know that this is where God wants me to be because there's a bigger purpose mm -hmm. to my life than just playing, you know. So 100%. this is where this is where I am, and I'm grateful, 100%. man. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and how how how's the football been? How's has it, has it differed um, from from the other places you were at in Europe? 
How, how have you enjoyed that and, and the guys on the team and how have they accepted you? Yeah, honestly, the guys are great. The guys are great. I've got some really great teammates and some really good footballers as well. Um, and I think it's, it's different because, so what it is, is here and in Saudi, like you can only have five uh, foreign players. Mm -hmm. So five foreign players and then two foreign players that are under 23. So mm -hmm. that's, so there's like seven. And the rest of them are then the local players that play that are from Qatar. So the rest mm -hmm. of the squad is filled with, with that. So it's so it's it's interesting because a lot of teams then have great foreign players yeah. and then are mixed in with the with the Qatar players, you know. So it's like it's like a, a seven v seven. <laughs> it's not a seven yeah, v seven. Yeah, of yeah, course, yeah, it's not. Yeah, yeah, there are you. some great yeah. there are some great Qatari players as well. Um, yeah, but yeah. but obviously, you know, when you're playing, when you've got players like Verratti and players like Coutinho and players yeah. and, and players of this of this caliber, you know, they're they're you know they're on a they're on another level um, to 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 the to the players. So it's like mm -hmm. seven 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 uh, foreign players, and then the rest are and obviously like in the, in in Portugal, in Qatar. Um, in sorry, in Portugal and in England, it's it's just like you know the best players uh, yeah. play. It's not about you know having foreigners or no foreigners. It's just like yeah. the best yeah. players just play. So that's the biggest yeah. difference, to be honest. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm Sounds like an interesting experience for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's man. Really so, uh, as we get towards the end, if you could take us a little bit through your national team career, you know, mm. see you've had some appearances with Curacao. You played against Messi, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. how was that? Honestly, playing against Messi was crazy. And especially yeah. like when we heard that we were playing against Argentina, they had just won the, the World Cup. So oh, it was like wow. this was their wow. celebration. This was their first game after they won the World Cup. And they yeah. asked to yeah. play against Curacao, a little island yeah. in the Caribbean, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and we were just like, wow, this is God's favour upon our lives. Like that way I get yeah. to yeah. share the pitch with, with Messi that I get to share. Yeah. Um, you know, this this moment with Messi was just mm -hmm. was crazy to see, man. It's crazy to witness. Like, yeah. even just him. Like, with, you know, like before the game when you're you stood in the tunnel mm -hmm. and you're walking out, he's walking out. I'm looking at the fans <laughs> and, the, yeah. and the stadium's full. It's like 90,000 90, people or like wow. Wow. more. Like the stadium's full, full. And I'm looking around and people are crying looking at Messi. People are falling over wow. looking at Messi. And I'm just wow. like, yeah. wow, like. The power yeah. that he holds, like amongst the Argentinian people, and it's just it's just awesome. surreal. And for me to be able to have shared the pitch with arguably for me the best player that's ever lived, the best player that's ever played football, um, was an honor. Was honestly an honor for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and how was he during the game? You know. Yeah, fantastic. What, what did you notice? Fantastic. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. you know, like yeah. he, the whole team plays for him. So it's yeah. like, yeah. Everyone's looking for him. So he waits for yeah. the right moment to exploit. And even in the box and stuff, like, he's just so, he's just, he's on fire. Like, he's just on fire. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's just, it yeah. gets right. away, get wriggles away. And he's, he's on yeah. a, he's on another level. He's on another level. Yeah. yeah. He's on another yeah. level. Unreal, man. Yeah, so as, as we get towards the end, just want to do a little quick fire round. For sure. I, I think also I wanted to ask you, you know, before, before we dive into the quick fire, you know, Sir Alex, you know, mm. looking back, what are some of the most important important things that you learned from him, and maybe the difference between him and, and some other other managers? When when it comes to Sir Alex, like he knew how to trigger players, he mm -hmm. knew how to get the best out of them, you know, and he also knew when to when to change, when to change the players when it was like, yep, it's his time to move on. We need to find us. Mm -hmm. You know, he just knew he was just a, an amazing man manager. And I think like mm -hmm. every player that has worked under him, like I didn't obviously have a lot of interaction with him in the mm -hmm. training sessions, of course, because I was in the 18s and then in the, mm -hmm. in the reserves and stuff. So he was obviously with the first team. But he, one thing that I knew about, he knew everyone's name. Wow. He knew yeah. everyone's yeah. name. So it was like yeah. from the workers to the security to the wow. to the um to the chefs to the cleaners. He knew everyone's name and he built a culture at Manchester United that was just 
That that it's just you can't. It's uncomprehendable what he did. Yeah, uncomprehendable, yeah. Yeah. uncomprehendable. And it was just yeah, it's just amazing to see like how he gets the best out of the players, especially mm-hmm. when you're at Manchester United. Like, think about it. Manchester United. Everyone wants to play. Yeah, 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 yeah. But how you keep everyone happy is another thing, you know. Like, it's yeah. it's not it's not easy. And he didn't he didn't keep everybody happy, but he kept everybody on a high level. Mm-hmm. He kept everyone on a Just high level. Just got the best out of them. He got the best out of them. Yeah. Got the best out of them because yeah. he wants you to be angry if you're not playing. He wants you to be frustrated mm-hmm. if you're not playing. But you got mm-hmm. the best out of them, and that is what it's yeah. about. It's about a coach needs to get the best out of the players that he has. And that's what he did. 100%. He got the best. He got the best out of everyone. One hundred percent, man. Crazy. Yeah, man. So, a couple, couple questions just to fire it off. Best player you've ever played with? Wow. Ooh. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go controversial a little bit because he was such a huge talent at Manchester United. Uh, but Ravel Morrison um, is wow. definitely like. His talent is undescribable. Um, he, he's he's on another level. He's on another level. His career didn't go the way that it should have mm-hmm. because he was really that gifted. Um, but yeah, he was someone that is on another level. On another level, definitely the best. Best player you've ever played against besides Messi. <laughs> 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 uh, I was gonna say Messi straight away. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got you there. <laughs> I remember when I was on loan at Northampton, we played against United, um, and obviously on that pitch, you know, you had even Rashford, you know, yeah. playing against, playing against Rooney, playing against Zlatan. Oh man, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say Wayne Rooney. Okay. Wow. Yeah, man, and then just uh, end it off, you know, tell us a little bit about, you know, Boars and God, you know, um, mm-hmm. is that is that your brand or, or how, how are you involved with that? So Ballers and God is a disciple making soul winning movement in the world of football. And okay. it's a place, it's a place that our leader, John Bostock created. God put it on his heart um, mm-hmm. a couple of years ago, not a couple of years ago, like about 10, 15 years ago, mm-hmm. um, put it on his heart to create a place where... Um, players would come and pray and and, and worship the, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and from that, his obedience is grown into something that is just phew, undescribable. I think mm-hmm. you know when when I joined, I joined about five years ago, and honestly, Ballers and God has changed my life. It wow. is wow. it has really made me understand who God is. Um, it's made me understand the you know the Word of God says, "Seek and you will find," and you know, when you seek God, he will reveal himself to you. And just to be a part of Ballers in God, like, that is where I really found um, found God. Because there was questions that I had in my heart that I, I couldn't answer. There was questions that I had that I couldn't. And my, my brothers in there that I've never met before, I've never met them. Some of them I've never met before, but they're closer to me than any of my friends that I have met. You know, and, and, yeah. and, and that is things because it goes deeper. You know, we're we're spiritual beings. We're we're not just this is our flesh, but this is our temporary home. And and ballers in God is a place where we can really cultivate that relationship with God. We can really grow our relationship with God. And it's a place where professional play, professional footballers, uh, footballers, we come together on a Wednesday evening, um, UK time, and um, we chop up the word. We have special guests coming on to preach. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have Bible study on a Sunday. We pray every wow. morning from seven o'clock to seven thirty. Um, just players coming together and worshiping, uh, worshiping Jesus, and and just mm-hmm. praying into into what hit for His will to be done in the world of football, because we believe that um, that God really instructed us to be be the light in football so that is mm-hmm. what we that is what ballers in god is and for any player that might be listening to this any p- footballer any semi-pro footballer you know please message the ballers in god page on instagram and um, saying that you want in or message me even on instagram um i'm one of the leaders what's your in instagram in god. kenji to, gore to it's just my okay. name kenji gore and we'll put it below yeah yeah for sure 
just message me on Instagram and I'm one of the leaders in there. Um, and, and honestly, Ballers and God has just changed my life. I'm also a co-host yeah. in there in the podcast as well, where we, we, we also listen, we hear um, players sharing their testimony, sharing the things that God is doing in their life. And also, you know, what got them to, to their the level of their career. Um, mm -hmm. So we mix faith and football um, into that as well. So, so that's, a, that's yeah. what Ballers and God is, man. That's unreal, bro. That's unreal. Like we yeah. said before, community is, is, is just so important, you know, believing yeah. the same thing, sharing your stories. Unbelievable, man. Yeah. Last question, you know, before we let you go, if you can go back to any age with the knowledge you have today, 29, played in all these, these places with tons of great players, what age would you go to and what would you tell yourself? I would go to the age of I would go to the age of 19. Mm -hmm. I'd go to the age of 19 and I would tell myself, I would tell myself, trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. Love that. Because there's so many times where your mind can tell you things that aren't true. There's so many times that your circumstance might be saying something to you that doesn't make sense, that you cannot comprehend. And your mind will just try to make something up. But... You can't trust in that because it wavers. It wavers, but something that stays the same is Jesus. He stays the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. And that's why it's to put my life on his foundation, mm -hmm. that solid rock. Because then when the wind comes, the storm comes, you're still solid. And you don't just waver because if you build on sand, you know what happens. It just washes yeah. away. And that is what I built my life upon. I built my life upon sand. And I would tell myself to build my life upon the solid rock of Jesus Christ and his principles and his ways and his thoughts. Love that, brother. Love that. Kenji, thanks for sharing your story, man. It's been a great conversation. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm sure the listeners will. Any, any last words? Oh, Rick, honestly, I just want to thank you. Um, thank you for letting me on and, and sharing uh, the things that were on my heart to share. Um, I just want to encourage you to keep going, man, because the impact Appreciate that you're you. having in this world, like, it doesn't go unnoticed, bro. Um, it doesn't go unnoticed. Keep doing what you're doing because uh, you're impacting so many lives, man. You're impacting so many lives. So just keep going, brother. Keep going. Appreciate it, bro. And uh, thanks Appreciate again for, for having me on and for all the for listeners sure. on here as well. Um, keep Keep going. <laughs> Just yeah. keep going. Keep moving. Yeah. Do yeah. every like I think I think something that is the expectation. You know, check like something that really switched something with that with inside me is like just to change the expectation for appreciation. Like mm -hmm. just change that what you think should happen and what you think should um, occur to just being thankful for what you do have right now. So mm -hmm. God can bless you with abundance. God can bless wow. you. So that's, that's the last it. word that I would love to share, bro. So thank you so much for having me on, man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it, man. God bless you, Rick. God bless you, brother.